So I know you're probably all thinking, the doctor lady is about to give us a big talk about sex, right? Well, I am going to talk a little bit about sex, but libido is so much more than just sex drive. Libido is your life drive. It's your life force. Libido is the energy needed to support everything that is important to you. In fact, Sigmund Freud described libido as the instinctual energy and the quantum magnitude that is comprised of everything having to do with love. And he didn't just mean physical or romantic love. He meant love to get out of bed every morning and have a great day. Love to do a great job, love for your family, love to check things off your bucket list. And love of sex is a big part of that, but it's certainly not all of that. So you can see why this is a very important question to ask as a doctor. And you can also see that it has so much more to do with, with health than just your sex life. So I graduated medical school almost 20 years ago, and I completed a double residency in internal medicine and physical medicine and rehabilitation. And for years, I got a lot of satisfaction out of helping my patients manage chronic disease and chronic pain. But somewhere along the way, I started to realize that just managing symptoms wasn't good enough for my patients. I wanted to do more than just manage symptoms. So in my search for a new way to help my patients, I stumbled across a new specialty in medicine. And that specialty is gaining momentum. And I believe that that specialty is the future of medicine. So I became board certified after a two-year fellowship in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. Now, the reason why I believe this is the future of medicine is because the old way was a one-size-fits-all type of medicine. We treated everyone the same. But in anti-aging and regenerative medicine, with the help of the Human Genome Project and all of the new testing that we now have available to us, we can now practice personalized medicine. We treat the individual based on their own genetics, their own biochemistry, their individual nutritional needs. And at the cornerstone of anti-aging medicine is hormonal balancing, and specifically through bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. In fact, some of the newer theories on why we age have to do with the fact that we age because we become hormonally imbalanced. So I'm going to share with you a story about a patient of mine, a typical patient. We'll call her Kim. But Kim could represent you, or she could represent your best friend, or your mother, or your coworker, your boss. But Kim was a singer and songwriter, and she was in her mid-40s. And she was very accomplished, and she was doing really well with her career. She was also a loving mother and wife. And things were just starting to get easier for her with regard to her career and raising her family. And she was at a point in her life where she wanted to sit back and enjoy some of the fruits of her labor. Well, about a year and a half ago, Kim was struck with some very severe symptoms. Started out, she lost her libido, but she didn't just lose her sex drive. She lost her drive to sing and to write music. And didn't feel like she had the enthusiasm that she should for being a great mother. But not only that, Kim began experiencing incredible fatigue. She also had full body aches and pains, and brain fog and memory loss. Memory loss was so severe she got lost going to frequent to, to places that she was familiar going to. She also had hot flashes and night sweats. And happy-go-lucky Kim became incredibly anxious, something she'd never experienced before. She had terrible insomnia. She hadn't slept in months. She really felt like her life was coming to an end. And so she did what most people would do. She went to see her doctors. And you know, we doctors are really good at writing prescriptions and treating symptoms. But that wasn't quite good enough for Kim. You know, her friends told her, you know, read this self-help book and uh, take this soy supplement and do yoga. 
and have a spiritual awakening and all of these things. She was given all of this advice and then she felt even worse because she didn't have the energy to do any of it. In fact, she had trouble just getting up out of bed every morning. So let me just set the record straight for Kim and for women like Kim. There aren't enough yoga poses, soy supplements, or self-help books on the planet to bring your ovaries back from the dead. <laughs> but modern medicine has a solution, and I'm going to share with you. So I'm happy to say that, that Kim, uh, after a, you know, a year later, is um, horm now hormonally balanced with bioidentical hormones. Her thyroid is optimized. Her nutritional defi deficits have been replaced. And Kim is back to being Kim. In fact, she's better than she's ever been. And she said, she told me um, that she was writing some of the most incredible music she'd ever written. And she sent me one of her demos a few weeks ago. And it was the most beautiful song I'd ever heard. And it brought me to tears. And she told me I gave her her life back. And, um, you know, as a doctor, it just doesn't get much better than that. And um, that's why I went to medical school. So, thank you. So, when, when I'm seeing a woman like Kim, and I treat men as well, but I'm going to focus on the women that I see, there's a lot of questions and fear that go along with this particular time in your life. And a lot of women say, well, isn't this natural? Isn't this just, you know, the beginning of the end? I'm this age, and don't I just have to power through it like I have everything else in my life and just accept it? And my answer to that is always, yes, it's natural. For prehistoric women, <laughs> right, whose life expectancy was 40 or 50 years, and whose job in life was to raise their children and help raise their children's children, but let's face it, from an evolutionary standpoint, once they had completed that, resources were limited. And it was in the best interest of the tribe that they die, that they, once they made the next generation, they needed to make way for the next generation. Well, we are not prehistoric women, and just at the time when we are reaching our prime, you know, we're, we're reaching our, our, our full, you know, feeling comfortable in our skin, and we've, we have our intellect and our wisdom and our maturity and our compassion. It's just about the time when, from an evolutionary standpoint, our ovaries are starting to fade. So what, what is the solution? And, and thank goodness we do have a solution. And that solution is, is hormone replacement therapy and health op optimization through personalized medicine. Now, when I bring this subject up, there's always a lot of fear and questions associated with hormone replacement. And I believe that the majority of this fear really comes from a study, and many of you may remember it, it was back in 2002, called the Women's Health Initiative. And this was a monumental study. It was an $800 million study, thousands of women, who were taking synthetic hormones, and it was the biggest health story of 2002. And what was found in this study is that the women who were taking synthetic hormones, um, while they had many health benefits, in one arm of the study, uh, there was a group of women who had a dramatic increased risk in breast cancer. And the, the risk was so significant that this monumental study was halted before it was completed in one arm of the study. And women everywhere were told to stop their hormones and deal with the consequences. Well, you weren't told the whole story. First of all, it's important that we understand the difference between synthetic hormones and bioidentical hormones. The hormones that were studied in the, World Health, in the Women's Health Initiative were synthetic hormones made from pregnant horse urine and synthesized into a pill and taken by mouth. They were not the exact replica of what our bodies make. And you know, they were perfect for horses, but for women, um, you know, they sort of worked OK. But um, we now have a better way. So now, with bioidentical hormones, we have found that it's an exact replica. And when applied to the skin or in a, um, in a pellet under the skin, 
It most closely mimics what our ovaries once did. And the health benefits are enormous. So I want to just review some of the health benefits um, that have been, we've learned a lot since 2002. And so just like the car that you drove in here today is safer probably than the car you drove back in 2002, well, hormone replacement therapy is much safer. So let me share with you the facts. And it's, I think it's really important that we pay attention to the science that we've learned since then. So on average, a three and a half year increase in life expectancy. But not just years, it's quality of life. So a Harvard study showed a fourfold increase in bone density with hormone replacement therapy. Fourfold, meaning less osteoporotic fractures. 50% less colon cancer. 50% less Alzheimer's in a study in a very famous journal called The Lancet, in which over a thousand women, elderly women were studied, and the women who had taken hormones in the past were 50% less likely to get Alzheimer's disease. And interestingly, there were 23 elderly women in the study who were still taking their hormones, and not one of them showed signs of Alzheimer's disease. Famous Fournier study showing that bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, when, when balanced properly, actually showed a 10% decrease in the risk of breast cancer, as opposed to synthetic hormones, which, are, which have a dramatic increase in the risk. Improved memory, improved blood flow to the brain, less heart attacks and strokes, less arthritis, and the list goes on and on. And not surprisingly, in a Stanford study, improved quality of life. So why isn't everyone using this? Why aren't we shouting from the rooftops that this is the answer to a lot of our most severe problems? Well, it's not something that has traditionally been taught in medical school. And it's not a little blue pill, one size fits all, that you can drive through Walgreens and pick up and everyone can take. It requires a great deal of expertise because every patient is different and each patient receives their own individual prescription and it has to be compounded in a compounding pharmacy and made for that exact person. So it's not something that's supported by a big pharmaceutical company. It's small compounding pharmacies that are doing this and it's not something that medical doctors have traditionally been exposed to in our training. But the word is getting out. And there, I've recently learned that there are programs at UT Southwestern, at Duke, and at Georgetown, and many other uh, wonderful institutions that are starting to teach people that this is an alternative and, a, and a, a safe way to practice medicine. Patients are doing their homework and, and learning about this online. And they're going to their own doctors and requesting this type of therapy. And some of us doctors hear you. And some of us are willing to make the sacrifices, take the time away from our practice, our busy practice, take the time away from our, our family, and make the investment in this type of medicine because it's that important. Women like Oprah Winfrey and Suzanne Summers are spreading the word that this has helped them, and they're starting the conversation. And they're showing that they can be at their peak in their 60s and beyond. As a 45-year-old mother of two, and I'm a single mom of a three-year-old and a four-year-old, the stakes are pretty high. I'm also the CEO of my patients' health, all of my patients, and it's their most valuable asset. I need to be at the top of my game, and my health is critical for so many people. This is what I've chosen for my own health. And I can honestly say, at 45, I feel better than I've ever felt in my entire life. So when you think about the old way of practicing medicine, there was a key for everyone, and it was the same key. It looked like the right key. It slid into the lock, but it didn't quite turn for everyone. The future of medicine is a key that's customized for you and it slips into your lock and turns beautifully, and it opens the door to a world of health that exceeds all expectations. 
So my hope today is that through this forum, I'm able to share this news with thousands of women who are needing this information. And I'm, I wish that these women can take hope in the fact that things are changing for the better, and at any age, the best is yet to come. Thank you.